When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallard. So down they flapped. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond. But they didn't find much. By the time Ping neared the shore, his uncles and his cousins were marching over. And by the time Ping reached the shore, the last of his 42 cousins had crossed the bridge. Ping knew he would be the last, the very last duck if he crossed the bridge. Ping did not want to be spanked. So he hid. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow. Plop! On top of Peter's head. In and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth. Dr. DeSoto was especially popular with the big animals. He was able to work inside their mouths, wearing rubbers to keep his feet dry. His fingers were so delicate and his drill so dainty, they could hardly feel any pain. Being a mouse, he refused to treat animals dangerous to mice, and it said so on his sign. 